For Greg Katz, this is Eric McKinney. Welcome in, Greg. It, it's game week. The USC 2020 football season kicks off on Saturday. Let's take a look at USC taking on Arizona State. Arizona State comes out to the Coliseum for a 9 a.m. game against USC. Going to have a national audience, a, a lot of fanfare. Maybe we're kicking off the Pac-12 season with the Pac-12 game of the year. Certainly one that's going to play a large role in deciding the Pac-12 South. What is your one sort of big overarching storyline coming into this game? Well, there really are so many, uh, but if I'm asked to do one, I would say it's going to be the battle of the two best quarterbacks uh, in the in the conference, in Jaden Daniels and uh, Keaton Slovis. I, I don't see any other way you could put it. When you have quarterbacks that are the best in their, you know, in the conference, something's got to give. You know, the first game, anything can happen turnovers, interceptions, sacks. But I think the quarterback that's able to withstand any defensive pressure or confusion will be the ones whose, whose team will probably come out on top. You know, for, for me, the big thing is the USC defensive coaches. We've heard all offseason about how important they were, both for just the defense and also kind of for the, the team, the, the morale, the culture, building that kind of level of, of physicality and toughness and all of that, I think that this is a real test for them. They've got Jaden Daniels on the other side, and that's a quarterback that is very dangerous in the Pac-12. So all of a sudden, you're, you're getting a big test your first time out. How do they get this defense to work? And I think another test that's going to come is you have no fans in, in the stands. And so that staff, they've been talked about a lot by, by players and other coaches about kind of the juice that they bring and, and the motivation they can provide. Boy, this, this is a big test early. Can you help? How much can they help, I guess, kind of get those guys going and, and let the defense maybe even set the tone for a team that it's certainly everybody would expect to be led by the offense. And, and like you mentioned, Keaton Slovis at, at quarterback there. So that, that's kind of my big storyline. What, what does the defense do for USC? How does it show up and, and what does it bring to a, a team, again, where so much attention has been paid uh, to the offense based on last season and kind of what's expected this season? Well, I think one really quick item, uh, yes. you know, we're all expecting this uh, ultra aggressive, violent defense, but they have to be careful that they're not overly aggressive against a quarterback like Jaden Daniels. Jaden Daniels, because of his, he's like Mookie Betts, you know, he gets, he gets, you put him in a position to do damage. Uh, he's going to do damage and he can, he can upset all your schemes and everything because he's improvising. So hopefully it'll be controlled uh, violence and aggressiveness. Uh, absolutely. Let, let's go into your sort of one verse one, your, your unit versus unit, player versus player. What, what's kind of the, the singular matchup that you think is the most important for this game? Well, I'm going to go above the players. I assume the players will play as hard as they can. I'm going to go with the defensive and offensive coordinators battle. Uh, specifically Graham Harrell, offensive coordinator for the Trojans, and uh, the new defensive coordinators for uh, Arizona State. Uh, you got uh, Love. Uh, Mar Marvin Lewis and Marvin Antonio Lewis. Pierce. Yeah, Marvin Lewis. You know, that's going to be a real uh, chess match. Uh, and uh, it'll see be interesting to see how they adjust to each other. Sometimes you don't realize, uh, you know, the player, the right call has been made. The players just don't execute it. And it's easy to sit there and say, what is he calling? What is he doing? But I think you'll be able to understand the schemes, not necessarily in the first series, because they'll probably throw something wacko to try to get, uh, get you off the mark. But, uh, you know, Marvin Lewis, is, he's smart. You know, if you're at the pro level, you know what you're doing. You know, you got to keep it a little bit simpler for the college game because you don't have a guy for three or four years or five years, you know, getting paid for it. So I would say Graham Harrell, versus Marvin Lewis intrigues me the most, to be honest. Yeah, I'm going to go with with USC on offense. And Ke Keaton Slovis versus the ground is kind of my matchup. How, how many times does he hit the ground? And again, that sort of transitions to the USC offensive line against the Arizona State defensive line. Can USC's offensive line keep Keaton Slovis upright? Is his uniform dirty at the end of the game? How many shots is he taking? How clean is that pocket for him? Because... I think we've seen enough from Keaton Slovis just in, in one year. If you keep him upright, if he's able to operate in the pocket or, or given time, 
he is going to pick any defense apart and, and he's going to make the throws. These wide receivers are going to get open. How much time does he get? How well does that USC offensive line play? Because you can talk about sort of developing the running game and, and how the running backs do and, and all that sort of stuff. And, and certainly those are things that we are going to watch and you love to see when that running game gets going and, and when the USC running game gets going, it opens up the passing game, but keeping Keaton Slovis upright, not only does that allow him to operate at a, at a higher level, and really I think that kind of is, is where the offense can explode when he's really throwing the ball around and, and working in this offense, but you look at longevity, right? I mean, it's something where, yes, the season is shortened, but it's, it's one hit. It's, you know, maybe back-to-back -back hits, something like that can change your entire season. And I know USC has Matt Fink behind him, but you saw the drop. I, I think what's ex Keaton Slopes' ceiling to, to Matt Fink's ceiling. Uh, I, I think USC coaches certainly feel more comfortable with Slovis in there. So that, that for me is going to be, if Keaton Slovis can make it, through the whole game with being touched, you know, not at all or, or very limited. Uh, I, I think that will be a big thing for the USC offense. Speaking of USC, give, give me your one player, USC, offense, defense, special teams, wherever it comes from on the roster, your sort of one guy who's the key to the game on Saturday. I hate to be redundant, Keaton Slovis. And, and to echo on your point, uh, they got to keep him vertical. They cannot, he's, he's prone to getting whacked. Uh, he did it against Utah, against Iowa, et cetera. The point is, is if he gets the time and gets the protection, he's going to control the game, okay? If he doesn't get the time, that puts him as a human pinata, okay? And I think if he becomes a human pinata, I think Matt Fink, uh, since you touched on it, I think he's a good guy to bring in for long relief. It's kind of like, use a baseball analogy, you know, we can fit him in uh, like a bullpen game. He's not going to hurt us. You know, he, he can do it like he did against Utah uh, last year in the Coliseum. But long-term, even though it's a short-term season, you know, you, you want Slovis, you know, you got to preserve him for at least seven games. And, uh, no, I think he's the guy that I'll be looking at on, on Saturday morning. I'm going to go on the other side of the ball for USC. What we have heard from EA, no, Ote Ote, what we've heard from him, from Clay Helton, from defensive coordinator Todd Orlando, about him sort of taking his game to another level. USC needs that. They, they need that guy in the middle. They, they need to go back to where they're producing linebackers who take the field and intimidate the, the offensive line, offensive or uh, running, you know, running backs, quarterbacks, those kind of people just by – showing up and, and being out there. And when you have a quarterback like Jaden Daniels, being able to potentially neutralize him at, at least a little bit uh, with an with a inside linebacker uh, like EA, if he's playing up to that level, I think that gives the USC defense a, a big advantage, especially when Arizona State is – they're, they're going to roll running backs out there that have never had a touch at this level. I mean, not, none of their guys have carried it. It's a, it's a Juco transfer and – some true freshmen out there for Arizona State. So USC did a good job against Arizona State running back Eno Benjamin last year. Uh, that there's, you know, we talked about a new offense, a new defense for Arizona State, but USC I think is is capable of playing well against a team that doesn't really have, or at least we haven't seen evidence of, of a real standout running back. So having a guy, I think in EA, both being able to kind of be the center of your defense and also maybe a guy that, you can do some different things with and, and maybe bring heat on Jaden Daniels in, in a variety of different ways and, and have a guy who can potentially run him down, I guess, if, if he gets uh, out of the pocket. I, I don't think that's a clear, you know, one-on-one -on -one matchup as EA goes, you know, Jaden Daniels play, you know, goes, goes the other way. But I think he's a guy who maybe could have a lot to say and sort of how the Arizona state offense does. And I think, have a lot to say in, in how this game turns out on Saturday. You know, what's interesting, Eric, is that I can't recall a player who's being so hyped up that's already been in the program for a couple of years. They're saying that this is the new EA. So your perspective is, is, is spot on. If you're going to look at it from a defensive standpoint, that he's this completely re remade player that Orlando has done wonders with him. And it may very well be true. And uh, if they're going to win, uh, let's all hope it is true.
certainly after hearing enough about him, expectations are going to be high. And he does have the talent, I, I think, to, to live up to that. So it'll be very fascinating to see kind of how he fits in this defense and, and what he and, and, like I said off the top, what he and this USC defensive unit can do against an Arizona State offense led by quarterback Jaden Daniels.